A tribute to Alexandria's giant of cinema, the work of Egyptian filmmaker Youssef Shaheen is in the spotlight here in the French capital. We take a look at portraits of exile and resettlement at a show focusing on migration and humanity and empathy radiate from Dorothea Lange's photography in an exhibition of her work here in Paris. We're starting the show with a filmmaker who launched the career of actor Omar Sharif and put iconic French singer Dalida on the silver screen. Youssef Shaheen was a major figure in the golden age of Egyptian cinema, winning the 50th anniversary prize from the Cannes Film Festival in 1997 for his groundbreaking body of work. Now, 10 years after his death, the Cinémathèque Française here in Paris is hosting a retrospective of his greatest films. France 24's reporters went along to bring us a glimpse of Shaheen's universe. At the Cinémathèque Française, it's top billing for the works of Youssef Shaheen. A new exhibition is celebrating the Egyptian filmmaker's career, which spans over five decades. Behind the scenes photos, notebooks filled with ideas and never before seen documents pulled from Shaheen's personal archives. This exhibition has a lot of depth, and it also shows Shaheen's great attention to detail. He was involved in everything, from the conception of the film to the poster. Shaheen's films are odes to freedom and love, one of the stars of his 1999 film, the other actress Nabila Abade, recalls working with the director. It was a beautiful experience. I learnt with him. I took from his experience. I did everything he asked of me, because the school of Yusuf Shaheen is a great school, and I very much wanted to study there. Abed is a star in Egypt, as is La Bleba. The two actresses came to Paris to pay homage to their favourite director. I remember that he loved his actors. He prepared us. He coached us. So that we'd be able to reveal our emotions for him. Shaheen's active political conscience meant he often fell afoul of the censors. His style defied categorization. He made comedies, autobiographical dramas and historical epics. But one common element was a passion for music and dance, with frequent references to American musicals and the dancing of Fred Astaire. No coincidence there, Shaheen studied acting in Los Angeles during the golden age of the Hollywood musical. There aren't many Arab filmmakers who are trained in the United States, and there are few filmmakers at all who are fascinated with the American musicals, with singing and dancing together, as Shaheen was. Shaheen also launched and relaunched other famous careers. He discovered one Michel Chaloub, better known as Omar Sharif, and gave a sober, dramatic star turn to French diva Dalida during her later years. Shaheen maintained strong ties to France throughout his career, as with his film Adieu Bonaparte, starring French actors Patrice Chéreau and Michel Piccoli. In 1997, Shaheen received the 50th anniversary prize at the Cannes Film Festival for his body of work. The so-called migrant crisis is back in the headlines this week, as more than 160 countries have pledged to adopt a UN-backed global migration pact. And that issue's on gallery walls, too. A group of artists has attempted to go beyond the media coverage, looking at the concept of hospitality and the traumatic journeys of those who seek it out. The result of that is an exhibition called Persona Grata, and it's being held at the Museum of Immigration here in Paris. Alexandra Renard and Catherine Clifford went along to check it out. A look at the notion of Western welcome from a different perspective. The foreigner, honoured in ancient times, is often these days Persona Non Grata, this exhibition, some 50 artists question this tradition for hospitality and its transition to hostility. I have immigrant roots, but it was actually my parents who came to France in the 60s, and it's a theme which has always been present in some way within my work, always going back and forth between France and Algeria because my parents are Algerian. As I opened myself up to the world, I realized that everything I was thinking, really personal things, in the end they apply to entire populations today. 
In 2017, 258 million people were living in a different country to the one they were born in, experiencing traumatic journeys and an often frosty reception. The exhibition questions what today's daily stream of endless images does to our empathy for these people. We decided not to get too close to what you see in the press, the images we're used to scrolling through on our phones and on our screens, which we've been desensitized to. So the idea was to guide the visitor into reflection as a citizen, to reconsider the meaning of hospitality and what lies behind that word. Coexisting at the heart of the same community, it's the current challenge for countries welcoming large numbers of migrants. These artists' visions might spark some new ideas, taking us beyond the usual headlines and images that have come to represent this complex journey of human suffering. We're looking at another exhibition focusing on displacement and exile now, although this perspective comes from the first half of the 20th century. The Politics of Seeing features work by American photographer Dorothea Lange. Over 100 prints made between 1933 and 1957 have been brought together alongside archive documents and film footage. Shining a light on some of the untold stories from migrant communities in the United States, it's a must-see exhibition for photography lovers in Paris. Julia Seeger has the story. Her poignant pictures put a face on the Great Depression. Millions of workers and farmers left without a job after the 1929 crash hit the U.S. An exhibit at the Jeux de Paume Museum in Paris is showcasing a hundred portraits by the famous American photographer Dorothea Lange, highlighting the extraordinary emotional power of her work. From 1935 till 1941, Dorothea Lange was hired by the Farm Security Administration to bring the plight of the poor and the forgotten to public attention. She traveled to rural areas across the country to document their lives. Her lens often turned towards families, children and women. She liked to shed light on women's issues and maternity. And she was very sensitive to the fate of the most vulnerable people. Vulnerable people like African Americans who at the time had to endure poverty and rampant racism in the southern states. 4,000 pictures were taken for the FSA, photos that have shaped our collective memory of the Great Depression. Uh, well, I certainly grew up hearing from my parents and grandparents uh, stories of how they suffered in the Depression or people that they had to help out during the Depression. So I think that is the, that legacy. I'm sure it's um, not as strong as it used to be because the people are, of that generation have mostly passed away. Later, Dorothea Lang photographed hundreds of Japanese Americans who were forced into camps on U.S. soil following the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. A piece of work that shows once again how Dorothea Lang used photography to denounce injustices and change public opinion. Asserting their civil liberties with the help of their smartphones, over 800 people around the world got involved with the Mobile Film Festival, sending in one-minute movies to shed light on human rights abuses. The theme ties in with the anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which was signed 70 years ago this week. Claire Rush tells us more. One minute, one phone, one message about human rights. Ashraf tackled this year's theme challenge with lots of imagination, but little means. In just one day, he had filmed his entry on the migrant crisis in his home country of Morocco. I tried not to think about it too much. I chose a subject that affects people in my life. I have friends who immigrated illegally to Europe. Some are even living here in France. Over 750 films from 81 countries were entered for this year's edition, marking the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The works examined violence against women. forced marriage, yeah. and LGBTQ rights. Rights that are still often violated 70 years after the signing of the landmark document. 
Les Nations Unies, je ne vais pas dire que c'est cette entité poussiéreuse. Je ne vais pas dire que l'UN est une institution outdated, mais c'est clair que nous devons trouver de nouveaux moyens de communiquer afin d'expandre notre reach. Dans le 21 e siècle, nous devons être connectés à la communauté contemporaine de médias numériques. Nous devons être connectés à des médias numériques, comme les smartphones. Nous devons être connectés à des médias de communication, comme les smartphones. Nous devons être connectés à des médias de communication, comme les smartphones. Nous devons être connectés à des médias de communication, comme les smartphones. Nous devons être connectés à des médias de communication, comme les smartphones. Nous devons être connectés à des médias de communication, comme les smartphones. Nous devons être connectés à des médias de communication, comme les smartphones. Nous devons être connectés à des médias de communication, comme les smartphones. Nous devons être connectés à des médias de communication, I hopefully that uh, people in Indonesia uh, finally uh, interest about to learn about uh, LGBTQ issue and learn about, about this community. Barry won 20,000 euros to direct a new short film. With the help of social media and video streaming websites like YouTube, today these kinds of films can rack up tens of millions of views and reach an ever-growing audience. We're wrapping up the show with images from a man famed for his romantic, iconic views of Paris, Robert Doineau. He may be best known for his street snaps, but as a lover of music, he also shot the jazz clubs of Saint-Germain-des-Prés, the singers of the Chanson Française scene, and brought us glimpses of the recording studios of some renowned musicians. Those photos are currently on show at Paris's Philharmonic. We'll leave you with a small selection. Remember to check out our website and you can also catch up with us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. Mettons 300 photos, hein? au maximum 300 photos, qui résistent au temps. 300 photos au centième de seconde, ça fait que jamais 3 secondes de réussite en 50 ans. Oh, j'ai pas... Oh, je veux te pas boiser